Sorry, Toby. You'll have to move. Right. Hello, everybody. It's um, Sunday, the 3rd of May, um, and I am recording a little later than I intended today, I'm afraid. Um, the various reasons. Things I had to get done, but it has meant that I'm a little behind hand. So, it probably means that I may have to interrupt recording. Hello, Toby. Are you coming to say hello? There we are, everybody. Toby is still alive and well and still getting in the way. <laughs> in the way that only he knows how. Um, it's about quarter past six in the evening at the moment. And on a Sunday, I and a few of my former colleagues, in fact, my two former bosses from the bus company um, and what a neighbour of one of theirs, we all get together with their partners and we have a quiz night So, on um, Facebook Messenger. So I'm going to be doing that uh, at half past seven. So at 25 past seven, I'll have to stop recording and go and set up for that. So I may then come back and finish what I'm recording. Hello, Toby. Yes, I know. I love you very much as well. Yes, I do. We all love you very, very much. Anyway, so the long story not cut short, as again, um, I will be um, breaking off at 25 past 7 for the quiz, um, after which I'll come back and record anything that's left out. Um, one of the reasons it's taken me so long to get recording today was because I was looking for something which I still can't find. I suspect somebody has helped themselves to it. It's um, a crochet hook that was made for me by Mike, my business partner and friend. And I suspect somebody thought it was a nice thing to play with. So, um, yes, we'll see if we can find it for next week. I do need it because I'm making something which I will show you what I'm doing further on. So I suppose I should... I didn't do it last week. I, um, I probably should introduce myself. My name is Jared or Peter or Boniface, depending upon where I am in the country. Um, I live in Abingdon on Thames in Oxfordshire, just seven miles south of the city of Oxford. And I crochet and knit and weave and do various other bits and pieces all to do with yarn. So there we are. That's the introductions done. Hello, my little friend. Yes, I love you too. Yes, I do. You just wanted to, as soon as I look at the camera, you want to know what's going on, what you doing. That's what you're doing, isn't it? What you doing? I know, I know. Well, I've got to talk to the nice people now. Um, I have in my teapot this week, I have a lovely gingerbread tea. So excuse me while I just pour a cup. Um, I've also got my water, which I need a sip of, so excuse me. Mm. Sorry, I suppose I ought to say I've cut my hair. <laughs> I've had my lockdown locks down. Um, and also my beard has gone uh, at one and the same time. I did film at the beginning of the whole thing, so if it's come out properly, then I will put a, a clip in probably at the end of the video for those who might want to have a bit of a laugh at my expense, which is fine. I'm perfectly happy with that. Um, excuse me. Oh, that is nice tea. I do like that gingerbread. Um, I'm also trialling today for the first time a two camera setup. Now, the reason for the two camera setup is not because I love seeing myself <laughs> from every angle. Um, it's partly because if it works, I want to be using the camera rather than the phone. So the video that's coming from the right looking straight on is my camera and the one that's coming slightly from my left hand side is my phone. So I'm hoping to be able to use bits and pieces just to see, just really to see whether that works, but I don't want to record a full episode on that, not like the end product and then you've got nothing to watch. So I'm recording on both at the moment and I will make a judgment and I'm very happy to hear your comments on the different bits and pieces. Um, you'll, you'll always know which is which. So if there is one version that you like better than the other, then just let me know. I've currently got the sound going through the phone, though. There is a camera on the... Sorry, there is a microphone on the camera, 
but I can plug this microphone that I'm wearing into the camera as well, so it shouldn't affect the sound quality. So I'm not really, cons I'm not really focusing on the sound quality here, just the picture quality, to see whether or not the camera is going to be a better option for going forward than the phone is. Anyway, there we are. So, um, what's been going on? Uh, quite a lot. Nothing really, I think, is probably the the way I would put it. Um, the shop is doing fine. We are managing the situation well. Uh, it was very noticeable that numbers were down on uh, Tuesday, well, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday this week were quite typical April days, which means that they were quite cold, windy and wet for much of the time. With, with a little bit of sunshine. Hello, Toby. Yes, I know. I know. And I'm talking to people that you can't see and it's very frustrating, isn't it? I know. But don't worry. They all love you very much and they're all pleased that you've made an appearance. Um, I'm sure you are. I'm, I know I'm speaking for you all, but I'm pretty sure that you are all pleased that he's made an appearance with us. Um, but Friday, maybe Thursday, but certainly Friday and Saturday were much brighter and Saturday was much warmer as well, so we, we saw a significant uptick in business. Um, we are on the whole managing to maintain the safe distancing. Uh, the UK government has this week, in fact today, announced that they are wanting to find ways to start reopening the economy, which is an essential part of life and, you know, it's the balance that we have to maintain between keeping people safe on the one hand, but actually having an economy that functions on the other. Um, I'm not sure that it's particularly going to affect us directly, um, other than it's unlikely that we're going to be able to have any of our guests actually using the seating area in the shop for the foreseeable future. But we've already set things up in such a way that that's actually not going to be a massive problem for us. Um, we will, of course, take careful heed of whatever the government advises concerning the young people that work for us because obviously safeguarding is about more than just avoiding sexual or physical abuse it's also about protecting and providing for the best interests of the young person and we have that very much at the top of our list of priorities so we will we will very carefully follow the government advice for our young people and make sure that they are kept in um, a situation which doesn't uh, provide a conflict for them. But at the same time, they, like the rest of us, are finding the uh, social distancing, the enforced separation, as difficult. You know, um, I've had a couple of the young people that work for us uh, say, you know, they can't wait to be back at work, or they really miss it, because we do, although it's quite heavy going sometimes, you know, we're, we can be very under the cosh getting the work done a lot of the time, it's still a very, or we try to make it a very happy and, and productive environment for people to work in. I don't want to work in, you know, in a place where my, the employees are afraid to say boo to a goose, that's not that's not who I am as a, as a manager, and it's not who I want to be working for either. Um, excuse me while I just have some more. So it's, you know, it's about finding that balance that allows them to get back to normal life, but also protects them. Um, and as a responsible adult, we have that duty of care to any young person, um, because we have to be able to make decisions which aren't based simply upon the emotion of the moment. Um, anyway, there we are. So I will keep you informed, but as, as of yet, we don't envisage any particular changes. Um, glad we've reopened the business though, because we've really enjoyed, certainly, I mean, Mike is in a similar situation to me, that effectively we live alone. And so being self-isolating, if we, if we were remaining in lockdown the whole time, we simply wouldn't see anybody. Um, so uh, certainly from my mental health point of view, I found it to be um, essential, really. And I know other, from the point of view of, of our guests, 
they also it it relieves a bit of the monotony and the boredom of of being in lockdown everybody is willing to be in lockdown but it's nice just to have those little treats as long as they are done sensibly and safely um, in such a way that uh, what we're trying to achieve isn't compromised which is what we set up then you know it's actually something they can look forward to at the end of a, a week of homeschooling for example or working from home where they're not getting to have their usual social mix either so it, it's it just provides a nice environment and and a little fillip to the to the the mood um and encouragement to continue on with uh, what we're doing so there we are so i hope all of you have got similar experiences that you're able to find those happy little moments in life it's it is those tiny little details in life that seem to be the most important at the moment the ones that just remind us of who we are and what we're doing and why we're doing it and that there is a there is a positive aspect to this whole situation so despite the shop being open for fewer hours, I don't seem to be any less busy at the moment. So I have been doing some crocheting and a little bit of knitting. Actually, no, this week it's been exclusively crochet. So there we are. Um, I've done the next six rows on my cardigan. Um, the um, cardigan, Don's Day Off cardigan. And for those who haven't seen this before, I'd better show it again just in case there is anybody tuning in for the first time. This is a top-down raglan cardigan and it's herringbone crochet. And uh, it has, now that I've finished the, those grey rows, well, when I finish the grey row that I'm currently on, I will be repeating this band of three colours which goes around the midriff area and around the sleeves as well so when I get the sleeves on and hooked down to there then I will um sorry I've forgotten what I was going to then I will add those colors in as well and work down to the cuff so I've done I've done to the point where I can now change color so that's actually quite exciting because for this for the three color band it's a it's two rows of the colour, then two rows of the grey, two rows of the next colour, two rows of the grey, two rows of the next colour, and then you're into the grey again. And it just relieves that monotony. The, the yarn is lovely, it's Katia Fine Merino, and it really is very nice yarn. But it is grey, and it's not tonal, so it's very much monotonous. <laughs> monotonous is the word. And that's not a bad thing in itself necessarily because it is also very relaxing. It's very mindless. I don't have to think about it. It's, it's just, it, it calms me quite significantly to the point almost that where I become soporific. Um, but it's good. And for that reason alone, it's worth doing. But it's also making a very nice fabric. And I'm, I'm quite looking forward to actually being able to wear it this winter. Excuse me again. Um, so that's the main thing I've been working on, or one of the main things I've been working on. The other one, and this is the annoyance of not being able to find this crochet hook. I wanted to road test the crochet hook that Mike made because he wants to make more for the shop at my request. And darn it if I haven't actually misplaced it somewhere. Toby, yes, I see you down there. Oh, and there's Bunty. Hello, Bunty. Um, she's just sitting near the window, minding her own business. She may make an appearance, you never know. Come on then. No? All right, you stay there then. That's a good girl. Um, so it's, it's a little bit frustrating that I've got this beautiful hook. So what he's actually done is just take a normal um, aluminium hook, the ones you get free with magazines, the, the thin ones with the tubular steel and with the flat bit in the middle and then the, the hook at the end. You'll be very familiar with them. If I had it, and I may have, in fact, a hook that is exactly that, just the aluminium. No, I thought I did it in the other box, never mind. Um, but anyway, so he's made a handle that fits onto the end of it and is 
glued into it, so it's very firm. It's um, a resin glue that he's used, so it's very, very firm, which is good. And it just feels so lovely in the hand. So I've really enjoyed using it. Um, I asked you last week for a pattern for my minis, um, and there have been a couple of suggestions which I will be looking at. But uh, Claudia from Crochet Luna, who many of you will know because I remember that many of you were actually recommended to me by her, so I know that you're very fam many of you will be very familiar with Claudia. Um, she's a very talented crochet herself and has a wide range of experience of different designers, certainly different designers from the designers I know. And she recommended a, um, a, a wrap by... Chilaborn, Chilabjorn, Chilabjorn, um, which means little bear in one of the Scandinavian languages. I can't remember which. Um, I will put. I I don't have a printer at the moment. I, it, mine died last year after ten years of sterling service, so I can't complain. And I have taken the decision at the moment not to buy a new printer because. I don't want to be printing things all the time because of the environmental impact that has. There are some things I do need to print and I use the stationers two doors, three doors down from my shop, um, support your local independence, and they, they print full colour A4 and A3 um, posters for me if I need them printing for the shop, so there's, and they're not expensive. Um, it, it provides an income for them, but it's not a huge expense for the shop which is really the only thing I'm actually having to print for at the moment. So um, I've made the decision not to buy a new printer for the time being. It may be a permanent decision, I haven't yet decided, but for the last 12 months there have been little moments when I've needed a piece of paper and it's been a little bit frustrating that I've had to wait until later, but it's not been the end of the world, it's certainly not a deal breaker. Um, so I'm, at the moment I'm not intending to change that, but sorry, I just had a bit of a coughing fit then. Um, it's hay fever, it's nothing to do with the COVID-19. I just got a tickle and it just... <coughs> anyway, back to normal now, so I'll carry on. So I, I've not printed the pattern, so I'll put a, a picture in from the pattern. Um, here, just so that you can see what it's like, and, and I'll provide a link to the pattern in the description down below for you if you are interested but it it basically is using eight skins hanks whatever of uh, four ply fingering weight yarn so it's not really a mini skein um, mini hank pattern though you could because i'm not following the colors that the pattern calls for anyway being me, I've chosen my own colours, <laughs> um, so I'm not, I'm, yes, it would be possible to split it up further, I guess. But I've chosen to use up some of my um, four-ply yarn, independent yarns in particular, that I have in my stash. So I went stash diving on um, Monday, I think it was, that on Monday or Tuesday, may have been Tuesday. And so I've complete this was actually a crochet along on the website when it was first published as a pattern and so i'm just about to finish part one which has taken me the best part of a week now importantly the pattern called for a three and a half or 3.25 millimeter hook i'm actually using the two and a half millimeter hook because that was the hook that mike made first for me um, which I'm, I'm not particularly concerned. It is going to be, therefore, dimensionally smaller than the original pattern. And added to the fact I'm using a smaller hook, I also have quite a tight gauge, quite a tight tension when I knit and crochet. Um, so it, it's very... Um, it, it will be smaller, but I'm, I'm loving the colours um, already. I'm loving the... I love the effect of the pattern. I have to be absolutely brutally honest. At the moment, I am doing... Well, I mean, the first part of the pattern is a row of trebles and then a row of doubles in the UK. It's a row of doubles and a row of singles in the US. And then the second part of the first part of the pattern, we're doing a kind of chevron, um, where you're doing the double and single 
going forward and back, but then creating these lovely triangles in the design, which involve doing a double treble, or a treble, I guess, in the US, back and then forwards, and then doing du doubles or singles across the top. Sorry, I, I, I teach both... Um, when, I, when I teach my knitters and so on how to crochet, I teach both American and British terms, so I just use them interchangeably at the moment. But I don't want to be pulling any more of those out. Excuse me a moment while I just find a... Let me just put my glasses on, Toby. Oh, you're sitting on them. There we are. Thank you. Let me just pull this up a little so it doesn't pull out as I'm showing the nice people. There we go. I have another two and a half. Actually, yes, I think. No, this one isn't loose yet. Um, anyway, that's that's one of my two and a half millimetre hooks as well. So I'm just using another one now for the time being until I find where Toby is hidden, the lovely wooden one. Uh, they like sticks. They're, they're almost like dogs, these two. They like sticks. So anything that's stick-like, they will pick up and carry around with them and then drop it somewhere. And, and you know, it could be under one of the chairs. It could be under the bookcase. I don't know where it is. It's going to be somewhere. It's not left the flat. But I've no idea at all where it is. It's very frustrating sometimes, isn't it, Toby? Anyway, back to the pattern. So I, I have found this particular stitch, the, the double treble back and then forward, the back part of it I have found rather tedious. I can't confess to anything other. I love the way it looks. It's it's well worth doing, but I can't say that I'm over-enthused at the particular process of doing that. But, you know, it's, it's producing a lovely effect. So I have used eight different skeins of yarn for this. And very briefly, I will tell you what each of them is. I keep them in my lovely chevron rainbow bag that was made by one of the ladies who makes things for the shop, a Jill. And she makes bags like these, and she makes larger versions of these as well. And they're very, very nice. And she even goes to the trouble of making a covered button to match the fabrics. And they're very simple bags. They're, they're just a, a nice flat-bottomed tote bag, um, but very useful for keeping a pattern like this in, and I just love the colours on this. And I think it's quite matched to the pattern that I'm making. So let me get all of these out. And they, all to, they are all, to some extent, a little bit stringy at the moment, but I keep all the labels as well so I know what each of them is. So, having said that, I don't have the label for this one because I have two hanks of this, or had two hanks of this, and I only need one of them. These are 100 grams each. Um, but I think it's Araucania yarns, I think. It doesn't have a name, but it's a very... I don't know what the colour reproduction on this is going to be like. So if I hold it to the different cameras, you may get a good effect. Uh, the way I would describe this colour is uh, a kind of peachy blush. So it's not quite beige. It's got a little bit more pink in it than that. But it's quite a peachy colour. Um, but it's not a strong peach. So it's a very nice neutral background colour. The one I'm currently working with is the denim, uh, which I believe I now just need to find. Sorry, I should have done this before I started, but you know what I'm like. Ah, I think it's the Definition Sock Yarn. Yes, it is. So it's the Artisano Definition Sock Yarn. Artisano. Or Artesano. I don't know how that's... It's artisanal or artesanal. Um, and it is the colour 4967 denim, made in Peru. It's a 75% wool and 25% nylon, as is the, the peach blush. Because most of these were bought as sock yarns. 
um, and, and you need that extra definition for sock yarn. Should I move that out of your way? And then you can sit down. There we go. You sit there then. So, and, and again, it's just a, a very, it's, it's a normal denim colour. It's not tonal, it's just straight up and down. Now those two, I think, were manufactured yarns in the sense of um, large numbers. Um, dye lots and all that kind of thing. Excuse me. So it has a very even uptake of the colour. Um, the, the other solid that I'm using is this purple. And this purple is the Plush Sock yarn, which is 80% superwash merino, 10% cashmere, 10% nylon. So it's an MCN. I hope you can see, but it's actually a really tonal purple. It's a very deep purple, but it's got very light bits in it as well. So it's not, it, it has a, a more dimension to it, more texture to it than simply the, the solid dyed yarn. Um, that's, uh, that's by Debonair Yarns. And those of you who follow me on Instagram will have seen these yarns as I wound them from Hanks um, and started using them in this pattern. Uh, so you'll already be familiar with the, the names of them. And then I have, so that's three, and that's four. I thought there were eight. Have I lost? Ah, oh, I've left one out. Sorry, I've left one in the other room, but never mind. I'll not talk about it this time. It was on the side. I meant to pick it up before I came in. So this is... Ooh, where is it, Toby? Where's the, where's the label gone? There it is. This is by Scheme Queen and is a UK-based dyer. It's a four-ply sock yarn. 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon. It, as well as being this lovely aqua colour, there are lovely spring green and bits of yellow in there as well. So it's got a lovely uh, speckled and variegated feel to it as it's used. And you can see that uh, it is the lower one of the two variegated yarns on either side of the denim. So it's this one here. And you can see it's got these lovely other splashes of colour running through it as well as this rather tonal aqua as the base. Now the one I can't, I haven't I've forgotten to bring in with me is the other Skin Queen uh, and this is, sorry, this is in the Crush um, four ply fingering weight and the the aqua is known as Splash because it's water. The, the greeny yellow is uh, neon Kiwi, which I think is a fantastic name to begin with, but also you have this lovely speckles of colour running through it, which just bring the, the two, the, the aqua and the, the green, yellowy green together. Um, so that's those two, and that's her label. It's a very sweet label, actually. I quite like that label with a little hummingbird on the side. Just put the ones I've used back in so I don't talk about them twice. <sighs> oh dear, it's got a little bit... There we go, let me just uh, fix this back up. It's got a little bit unwound, so I'll just rewind it so it doesn't become a tangled mess. It's always the problem when you wind things from hanks into cakes. You do The outer bits do tend to get a little bit frisky. I still tend to pull from the centre of cakes and skeins. Um, I just have got so used to doing that. And I actually quite prefer it. I know you can get the, the, the so-called... Ah, excuse me. So that's useful to know that the camera has a maximum recording time. So I now need to re-record. There we go. Um, I don't know how long the other camera was out, but that's, it's use, it wasn't that long because I keep looking across to the two. But in my peripheral vision anyway. Um, this one is, I believe, yes, it's the um, Manos Silk Blend Fino um, in colour 6881, which is not very descriptive, but it's, it has 
these darker greens and purples and blues and pinks running through it and it's really very pretty and despite the fact it's got all of these different colours and I'll, I'll just try it on here and just see if there is actually a difference in the oh, sorry with my face and it's focusing on my face um, so I'll just see whether or not it makes a difference to the colours depending which camera I'm looking at because it's actually again I uh, I discovered last week after I'd recorded that what I was seeing on here was not actually what you were seeing on the final video. So my screen is set up to show it slightly differently from the way in which the camera is recording it. So it may be that it looks quite bright on, on there. It's a, it's much more muted. It seems to have an overlay of a dark, a grey within it. Um, but I will let you know which of these is actually the more accurate reproduction as well. Um, and then finally, not finally, I have two more, sorry, although I think Toby is now sitting on one of them, oh no, there it is, I'll let you off this time. And this is also a Manus del Uruguay Silk Blend Fina, and this is a, a much more fiery reds and purples, um, and it looks like flame almost, it's it's really very very strong but again is more muted in real life than the reproduction on that screen and again I will show it on that camera just so that you can see whether or not it's uh, an accurate reproduction and I may even do some split screen work with this now that I've got two camera feeds as it were so you might get a more exciting video, you never know um, and then finally we have what is probably my favourite, even though I love all of them this is probably my favourite. This is Countess Ablaze. Uh, that's her logo. She's based in central Manchester, about a mile from where my mother lives. Maybe two miles from where my mother lives. And the, um, the, the yarn is known as Lady Persephone Sock Yarn. And it is 75% blue face luster and 25% nylon. It's four ply as well. But the colourway is the gin made me do it. And anyone who knows me knows how much I enjoy my gin. So, <laughs> I mean, within moderation, obviously. I, I promise you, I, I'm, it's, not, it's not for nothing, it's known as clergyman's ruin. Anyway, this is the colourway, and it is magnificent. I absolutely love this. It has deep blues and bright pinks and purples and dark greens and light greens and yellows, and it's this natural kind of creamy colour running through it as well. Um, it is very much a variegated yarn. It's not um, in any way self-striping. It's, it's not even micro-striping if I was to make it into socks. It's very, very much a variegated yarn. Um, so those are these, the eight yarns that I'm working with. Um, and you'll see that progress. Uh, hopefully I'll have finished part one uh, by certainly by tomorrow after evening and then I'll be working on part two after that so watch this space mm. oh the gingerbread tea is lovely it really is and I'll just have some water as well the other whip that I have on the go at the moment is that I'm actively working on is just another um, frontline hero bear. Um, my godson's mother is a care healthcare assistant in um, I think in a nursing home, in a care home for unwell older people. Um, so not just a residential care; it's it's nursing care as well. Um, so she's obviously working on that front line and having to maintain her own well-being in order to maintain the well-being of others so as a I thought I would make one for her as a nice gesture so that's coming along and that will that should be finished by Tuesday which I think is when we next have the boys staying over so that will be nice right so but I won't bother showing you that it's only the legs and the bottom part of the body so far it's not very exciting it's it, it is it's in progress and it will be finished and I'll show you when it's finished sorry I'm, I'm quite nasally again today I don't really know why but hey there we go 
I'm, I'm, I'm just not quite getting used to seeing myself with the... Oh, I really should talk about the two cushions that are behind me. Um, both of them made by the wonderful, gorgeous Wendy. She'll be blushing now because I said she's wonderful and gorgeous, but she is. And super talented. Uh, this was my birth... No, this was my Christmas present this year. Um, which I just think he's... He's so... I think he definitely is Wall. This is how I imagine Wall from uh, Winnie the Pooh from when I was a child. So I, I absolutely love this cushion. Um, I just think his expression, I mean, in a way it's not an expression at all, but it, it is. And I hope you can see these are all different fabrics that she has sewn together to make the whole. And I just think that's incredibly talented and very kind of her to make that for me. Well, as well as that one, this was made for me. Now this was either, I can't remember if this was Christmas last year or my birthday, just may have been my 50th birthday. But anyway, the three owls. And again, this, this is actually done by embro embroidery. As you can see, it's, she has an embroidery machine and she makes these and it's just so lovely and the colours are just fantastic. Very much my colours, the orange and the purples. Um, I absolutely love those. So yes, wonderful Wendy. And she has several commissions that she... Oh, sorry. Drunken owl now. Um, she has several commissions that she uh, makes for people through the shop as well. So um, that's very, very nice to be able to pass work her way. And that other people appreciate what she makes as much as I do. Mm. And I think it was Claudia who left a comment in my question and answer a little bit. I'm, I'm just going to intersperse the whole answers through the, through the episode rather than having a single block at the end. Um, she asked how Bob and Wendy were doing and uh, they're doing very well. Um, Bob works for the bus company still and so is still actually working as well. He isn't driving the big buses at the moment. He had he had, had some time off last year for personal reasons, and when he went back to work, he started working on the staff shuttle, which he had been doing previously. Um, the main depot for the bus company is out on the ring road on the eastern side of the city, but the changeovers of drivers to vehicles happens in the city centre, so the bus company needs a way of getting people from the depot to the city centre in order to, and then from the city centre back to the depot with their money so they can go home and all the rest of it. And so they run um, minibuses back and forth and Bob drives one of those, so he's not directly dealing with the public, um, he's dealing with the people who deal with the public, as it were. And when the ha works at, um, at one of the uh, childcare nurseries out to the um, western side of Abingdon, which I think has been closed, so I don't think she has been going to work. Um, but I'm not absolutely certain on that. But other than that, they're both keeping very well, from what I can tell. Obviously, lockdown is, is no easier for the, them than it is for anybody else, but... They seem to be in very good spirits and they, they both seem to be in good health as well. So um, I'm sure they'll be delighted that you've asked and very embarrassed that I'm talking about them. But they are very good people, uh, very good friends. And I'm looking forward to when I can have Bob over again for European football on the TV and that kind of thing. Um, and when we I can just pop in for a coffee um, and so on. And when they can come down to the shop. So, yeah, we... From time to time, every week or so, I will go and ring on the doorbell and then they will stand at the balcony of their bedroom talking out of the window to me just so that we can have a, a, a chat and a catch up, um, which is nice. It's nice on both sides, you know, it just keeps keeps everybody that little bit saner. Um, and obviously for Wendy, there is the concern about her mother who's older person and therefore an at-risk person and she can't go and see her at the moment because she doesn't live with her and so but Wendy's sister lives with her so she does have someone with her so she's not left by herself but it is obviously difficult that they can't 
go and visit. They normally pop over every week to see her, so at least once. So it's it is difficult. Um, in the same way as it is for everybody else at the moment. But yeah, they're, they're, they're keeping good spirits. And uh, as I say, they seem to be well. So there we are. But thank you for asking. Um, I do have a couple of finished projects that I finished previously. Um, in a way, there's a lot of catch up to do with these because I didn't record for so long. There are a few bits and pieces. I mean, there are other bits and pieces that are out in the wild now, and I may talk about them at some point, but th there are some bits and pieces I still have here. Um, so I just thought I'd talk about the two of them. Uh, both of them crochet. Um, Katia, and I can't find the box anywhere, but Katia uh, had started a new line of a cotton yarn. And it's a very nice cotton yarn. It's an Aran weight, so kind of heavy worsted. Slightly slightly bigger than normal worsted, but about the same weight, really. You use about the same size hook. There's not a lot of difference between them. And it's very nice, and they were selling them... Oh, excuse me. Oh, dear, it's been a long day. Um, they were selling them in a kit to make a shopping bag. So I bought one. Now, before I show it to you, it's the, the kit, or the yarn, comes in a cake and it's a cake that has a kind of gradient from cream through to through several colors to uh, another color at the end and, and being non-specific because there are different colors that you can get and i cannot remember for the life of me the name of the yarn but they sell this kit and i bought the kit one for myself and one for your stylist for her birthday and being the person I am, I am a centre pull person. As I just said, I, I pull from the centre, partly because my lovely pussy cats, Toby's sat down here now fast asleep, or at least he was until I stroked him. My lovely pussy cats, if I had yarn rolling around the place, they would be chasing it. That's just reality. So I always pull from the centre. And because I pulled from the centre, I've made the bag upside down. <laughs> It's supposed to start with a dark colour and get lighter until it gets to the cream. I start with a light colour and it gets darker until it gets to the top colour. Anyway, this is the bag, without any further ado. Um, it's very simple construction. It's almost like filet crochet, actually. Um, it is effectively filet crochet, but on a, on a grander scale. So there's a mesh of a treble crochet and a chain all the way round. And then this circle motif, which is on both sides in the middle. Um, if I open it out a little, you might be able to see the motif a little better. I th well, I think you can probably see it, it's, it's there. Um, but yes, the colors are supposed to go the other way, so it should start with the dark at the bottom and the light at the top, but hey. And then of course the handles, which match the color, wouldn't stand out in the way that they do. But I like it anyway, and it's just meant to be a shopping bag. Because it is cotton, it crochet stretches, we know that but because it's cotton, it won't overly stretch. So it should stretch enough to be able to put shopping into it, but not stretch so much as to become unwieldy, dragging along the ground as you're walking kind of thing. And it folds away into quite, a, I mean, I've not folded it particularly well, but it folds away into quite a small package. So, you know, you can pop it into a handbag or into another bag and it's there. So it's a, it's a little market bag. It's a nice little bag nice handles that come with it. And I think making the handles this kind of leatherette, leather effect, means that they don't stretch because that is the biggest weakness of crochet hang handles is that you do have to work very hard to stop them from stretching out. And that is, oh, you know, that's something that isn't going to be a problem with these handles. And they're just, as you can see, it's just a very simple stitch into the, um, the fabric and then I finished it off at the top with a crab stitch, a reverse double crochet stitch um, just because I like to have a nice edge, an alternative to just the open stitch. It's not necessary, you can not, you can not do that. I Also because I have a tight gauge, as I've mentioned already, the dimensions are slightly smaller. I use less of the yarn, so I've got some of this yarn in the orange left. All of the bands should have been the same height. Obviously, the orange is a lot shorter 
than the others, as you can see perhaps even more clearly on that one. But there we go. I like it. It's a lovely bag. It's useful. I may give that as a gift. I've not used it, so I may give that as a gift. I haven't decided. Um, several of you may remember two summers ago now, I designed a couple of wraps, uh, beach combers. One was for make, uh, f to be knitted by hand and the other was uh, knitting with a machine. Well, I've also made a version of it uh, using crochet, which I, I wrote the pattern and then I've mislaid it somewhere. I cannot find on my computer files where the pattern is. I know it's there, I just don't know where there is. Um, again, so this, well, I'll just show you. This is the beach coma wrap. Um, it's just a nice loose wrap for going around the shoulders, perhaps on a summer's evening when you've been walking down the beach or if you're at a barbecue and it's a little bit chillier as the sun goes down, you can just pop this on and it's, it's over the shoulders. It's quite nice. Um, it's the yarn. <laughs> I can't remember the name of the yarn. It's in the pattern, but I can't remember where the pattern is. <laughs> I'm not very good at this, as you possibly have noticed. Um, anyway, it's it's a cotton yarn, and it has these sequins in it. And I remember I was given this. I won this as a prize at Mason's for a local yarn shop day. And if I take it into Mason's, they will know immediately what the yarn is. I think you can see the sparkling of the sequins. So it's not it's not got a sparkle in it, it's actually sequins that are, are part of the the yarn itself. Um, and if I bring it in, you can see that. I quite like the construction of this. Without giving a lot of way, you actually make the central spine, the um, cable first, and then the sides are built up on either side so it's a it's made central spine and then you turn it sideways make one side turn it sideways make the other side and i also do broomstick lace in the knitted version i put in um, dropped stitches uh, which produces this this kind of uh, horizontal bars the, the lacy horizontal bars in crochet, I just did it as broomstick lace, uh, which sounds complicated, but it's actually really quite simple. And my intention is, once I found the pattern, because I really don't want to have to rewrite it, but I will if I have to, um, my intention is to publish this on Ravelry and to do some tutorial videos on making the cabled spine working, picking up the stitches along the sides, making the broomstick lace. The rest of it is, is really quite straightforward. And again, I edged it with crab stitch, which you wouldn't necessarily have to do, but I just think it gives it a nice finished edge. Um, which is interesting because I didn't choose to edge it along there. And I do still have some of this yarn left, so maybe I will. I don't know, I quite like the unfinished edge at the edges. I like the finished edge along the top and the bottom. But I quite like the unfinished edge on the sides. But we'll see. Anyway, so that's that's the crocheted version of my beachcomber wrap. And I will I will try and get that written up as quickly as possible. I think I'm just going to have to bite the bullet and rewrite it because I have searched and searched and searched for this pattern and cannot find where I saved it. I know I've saved it, but I cannot find where. But there we go. These things happen. It's not a complex, not a difficult pattern. It's a little bit involved, but it's not a difficult pattern. I think probably an adventurous beginner could do this um, but I will take some photos and write up the pattern and get it out on Ravelry and then you can see for yourselves anyway so those are my finished objects um, I've got about 15 minutes left before I have to stop for the first half um, sorry I'm, I'm not quite used yet to the fact that my hair is so short but I do like it short 
I have noticed that whilst it's not thinner on top, it's certainly a lot greyer when it's shorter. In the past, when I had it cut, this would, this would all be dark, but it's almost invisible. Um, you possibly can hear it rubbing, but that's but it's almost invisible. I'm, I'm not particularly concerned about the way it looks. I quite like it, and that's really all that matters. It's cooler, which is the most important thing. Um, the barbers are not going to be open for the foreseeable future, so I, it was something I felt I had to just bite the bullet and get it done, so it's done. Anyway, right. Ah, what next? Oh, well, I'm going to talk a little bit about some acquisitions, which are not new acquisitions. Um, I'm aware that there are lots of things I have bought over the last 18 months that you'll have no idea about. So it's going to seem like that's, that's an awful lot of stuff, but it's not really. Um, I, as I say, I've noticed that one or two people have recommended... Um, patterns for me to have a look at for mini skins and I actually found some more um, so I didn't show these last week although I could have done because I had them this is skein heroin uh, again I believe she's a UK based dyer I'm pretty sure I bought these at Unravel last year but it might have been at the Southern Wool Show the September before. I can't now remember whether I bought it. I think it was Unravel. I'm fairly sure it was Unravel. Um, I just love these. These are very tonal colours. So they're not so they're solids, but they're not solid solids, if you see what I mean. Again, it's blowing out a little, but I'll I'll reserve judgment until I've seen what the um what the computer actually shows me to see what you're actually going to get. I'm just wondering if I need to... There we are. Is that better? That's in focus now, isn't it? Yeah. Um, sorry. I, it's very difficult to look at you and to look at you at the same time. But we'll, we'll get the hang of this. I, know, I don't need to labour the point. Um, so this is her Impudent Sock base. Although it does look like Impudent Sack, but it can't be. <laughs> and it's 100% Blue Face Lester. Which normally you'd think that 100% wool is not going to be strong enough for um, toes and heels. Which are... I, I remember I was watching Cozy Up Knits. Uh, actually, I think the latest episode where Jamie says that actually the area of her socks that get the most wear is actually the balls of her feet. Um, which I think, you know is possibly true in her case but for most of us it's the toes and the heels that take the most beating and that's why they you tend to have sock yarns that are reinforced with nylon or silk because those fibers are quite strong and can resist the the wear that they would other, otherwise suffer um so but blue faced lester is also although it's quite soft to the skin it's not got that scratchiness you can also feel within it it's actually got that that strength as well so it i think it would work quite comfortably and i think most of us take more care over our knitted socks than we perhaps do over just the general everyday socks that we wear uh, certainly in terms of the way we treat them while we wash them and dry them we're probably more careful about them on the whole so it may be that it doesn't that they don't get that much wear anyway and you know if they do they do and what do you do well you can I, I you can always just unpick I mean you can darn them to begin with but you can also just unpick the worn area and re-knit them with a different yarn I mean that's always possible to do you just pick up the row of stitches that you want to start knitting from take out all the yarn that you want to get rid of and, and substitute in new yarn. So it's not the end of the world. Um, and it's still a lot less work than knitting the whole sock again. So it's it's not a, a deal breaker anyway. But these are really lovely colours. And I think that by itself would make a really nice bit of colour work in, a, in a, a shawl, for example. 
or around the yoke of a jumper or something similar. But these, now these I must have bought at the same time. I cannot find the piece of paper that tells me what they are. I think they're merino and I think they're a 75-25. They could be 80-20 but they feel a 75-25. But it's this lovely rainbow. So there are actually nine of these in the in the set. Um, and I just love them. Well, I love rainbows anyway. Who doesn't love a good rainbow? But I love every single one of these colours individually. And I love them all together. Um, so hopefully this is feeding the imagination of several of you that you could think what it could be that I could make with all these. So... In total, I mean, with last week's as well, we must have something like 20 mini hanks of 20 grams. So that's, sorry, I've got something in my eye. So that's 400 grams of yarn, which is an awful lot. Um, I think it's the dust from the socks, from the wool, anyway. Uh, so, yeah, with lots of colours. So any, anything that you can suggest, I will take a look at and um, see. I mean, Claudia recommended the Spirits of Life shawl, uh, wrap and I started making it straight away because I love I loved the look of it um, and I love the idea of using up those yarns. So please feel free to recommend anything you like. Uh, right, it is... 20 past 7, so I'm going to stop there for the time being, and I will resume this afterwards. So um, until I see you again, bye for now. Right, well, we're back again. It is uh, an hour and 20 minutes, half an hour further on, so it's about 10 to 8 at the moment. No, sorry, it's about 10 to 9 at the moment. Um, quiz night went very well. Uh, I keep winning. It's not my fault. What can I say? Um, we, we're having a little uh, steak as we go along. Um, Everybody puts a pound in to enter, and then when lockdown is finally over and we all get together again, we, the winner gets to take everybody else out for a drink or a bite to eat or something, so that's nice. Um, so that is the interruption over and done with. I don't think we're going to be a huge amount of time longer, but I've said that before and it's not proven to be the case. Whilst I was in my room, I um, took the opportunity to pick up the Neon Kiwi that I mentioned before. Um, again, you might be able to see on the other camera just the colours involved in that. And I'll show them on this camera so that you can see them as well. And it's just a beautiful... I mean, it is... It's got everything I love in a colourway. Um, it's got the brightness, the cheerfulness, it's got that depth of tone in the speckles. I just love the whole thing. Anyway, there we are. Hello, Toby, have you come back again? There we are. Um, so that can go back in the bag with the other yarns now so it doesn't get lost. I, I didn't look for my um, hook, so I will find that eventually when I work out what Toby did with it. Won't I, Toby, eh? I'll work out what happened. There we are. Uh, it's gone a little bit chilly now that the sun's gone down. It's been a mild day for most of the day. Um, but, yeah, it's uh, dark and it's a bit chilly. So, hopefully, the sun will be back up tomorrow. There's, there is some cloud cover, so it shouldn't be too cold tonight. Right. So, I've talked about quite a few things before my little break. Um, I do have some other acquisitions that I haven't shared with you previously because... I bought these whilst I wasn't recording. Um, one of the th things I do have, which I isn't knitting related, but I think you probably like to see them, I have what's known as eco straws. Sorry, eco sips. And they are lovely metal straws that I use for drinks when I'm out and about, um, rather than using plastic, because they, they can be washed quite easily. They'll also go in the dishwasher, but they have... They come complete with their own little brush that can be used. And there are some straights and some bent and lots of different colours. So, yeah, those are my eco-sips. We 
in the shop, we obviously take our environmental impact quite seriously. And being a drinks shop, particularly a shake shop, we do have a lot of drinks that require um, cups with plastic lids and straws and that kind of thing. We've already converted now to using entirely um, paper straws. They're paper straws that are reinforced with a coating of cornstarch, uh, PLA it is in fact, but it's a very thin coating of cornstarch, which means that it will actually biodegrade it in composters, the industrial composters that are used locally in our a refuse collection areas. So the local authority bins are composted um, either domestically or, or the ones in the streets. The, so wherever the person happens to throw it, it, it away, they, it will be composted. And we've moved to the same PLA plastic in our uh, lids for our cups. And also as the coating, we now have paper cups, entirely paper cups, for the hot drinks and the cold drinks, which are made from cornstarch as well. And that has benefits, it has some disadvantages. Um, the cornstarch plastic does um, biodegrade with heat, and obviously with hot drinks that can be a bit of a problem. But we've, we've so far we've not found that it's led to any particular issues, so fingers crossed it will continue that way. Um, so, yes, the acquisition. So, I did buy a couple of things at Unravel. But then I also, not long after Unravel, I went to... Well, before on the first time I went to Unravel, I went to the Southern Wool Show, which I think I showed you everything I got there, apart from those mini schemes which were hiding away. And I then went to a lovely shop in Reading called Lady So-and-So. Sorry, in Henley-on-Thames, this one. I, I, do, I, I always get confused. So that's Henley-on-Thames, Lady So-and-So. Rather cute plastic bag with rather nice logo. Um, and it's not, it's largely a fabric as well. Uh, but they, they have a sizable collection of yarns, particularly they're a Rowan yarn company. And so I got six, yes, six balls of 50 grams, so 150 grams of each colour, of this Hemp Tweed by Rowan. And it, this let me just find out exactly, because I don't give, want to give the wrong information. Here we are, it's on this side. Oh dear. I do find the problem is that when they print these labels with brown, one shade of brown on another shade of brown, which is what cream is really, it can make it very difficult to see because they, they complement each other very nicely, but it actually makes the contrast less visible. Anyway. It is 70%, no, sorry, 75% wool and 25% and hemp, um, which is the non psychoactive version of marijuana. Um, and I've got the two colours. Uh, this is duck egg, and I think it is a very nice duck egg colour in, in the light, but I don't know whether you're going to see that true colour. We'll, we'll wait and find out. And this is mauve, which, yes, it is. That's exactly the colour it is, is mauve. And actually, that's coming up quite well, partly because my light shade above, hanging above, has slightly pink-tinted glass, and I think it's actually picking up the mauve colours much better. Um, again, we'll try on this side and see what it thinks. And so the two will go together. As I say, there are six balls of that. I'm not sure what it will be yet. I suspect I suspect it will be a wrap of some kind. I'm, I'm going to design something for myself for this, um, and that's why I bought it, but I haven't done any designing recently, and I think it will be crocheted as well. I'd like to make another, either a shawl or a wrap, 
um, something with texture rather than colour. I'm, I'm very much into the texture thing as much as the colour. So it would be quite nice to... I've, I've got a few ideas about what I might like to do with it. Um, having seen other items in the flesh, and I'm, I'm really quite interested in some of the historical um, stuff that used to be made. And I do have some old patterns from my mother from the 60s and 70s, uh, mostly knitting patterns, but a few bits of crochet. And it will be interesting to modernise that, particularly with a more modern yarn. Um, but yeah, it's, um, it's good. And to help me along the way, I've got this nice little notebook from Rowan, which I think because I bought the six balls I got free, I think, I'm not sure, but within it has charts on one side and lined paper on the other side so that it allows you to, particularly for things like knitting charts, allows you to design your own or to, to make a copy of your own as you go. Um, so I, I'm going to try and use that and see how far we can get with it. So that go, lives with the other yarn. And, oh dear me, I'm so sorry. Oh. I hate, I hate to yawn, but I just, there are certain times a day, because of the medications I take, there are certain times a day when I just get this wave of fatigue that crashes over me and then it just disappears. It dissipates completely. I'm just going to take some water because I find that does help. Right. And the other thing I bought at that shop was this book by Martin Storey, uh, Easy Cable Knits. And it's got a variety of really quite nice patterns in there. It has these um, long sleeve gloves, fingerless mitts kind of thing, which I, I think look very stylish. Um, and will also keep you rather warm. There's this attractive um, cardigan, which, although it's designed for women, I don't think it will take much alteration to make it for men. Although I've still got to finish my other cardigans at the moment, so I'm not starting a new one. Um, and I quite like this cowl, which, unusually for a cowl, the twist, uh, it's difficult to... Oh, she's wearing it on the front cover. I can show you the front cover. It's... It, the the cat the um on most makes that you have because you don't knit in the round the cable tends to go along the length of the cable rather than up and that one actually goes up and I quite like that effect so I may try something like that with the super bulky for the shop for next winter um, not not necessarily the same cable but the same idea oh, excuse me oh, it will get better. I, I, I will stop yawning, I promise. But the other thing I bought <laughs> whilst at Unravel, this was. Well, I've got two sets, really. Um, <laughs> yeah. Surprise, surprise. Yet another set of minis. Aren't they gorgeous? Are they not just? Does that not make you want to have them? Now... This is actually a collection of different dyers. So this was from Fig Tree Yarns, which is based in the Channel Islands in Jersey, I think. Yep, Jersey in the Channel Islands. So they have a shop and they sell other people's yarns, obviously. Um, so we have this squishy fingering sock yarn called Anzula, oh sorry, from Anzula Luxury Fibres, which is hand dyed in Fresno, California. And the colour is Misfit. So that's this one. And it isn't quite that bright a magenta, but it is almost that bright a magenta. Uh, again, I'll show it on the other one to see whether or not it actually shows up any differently um these are that's a 25 gram mini uh this is from 
knit one crochet two and this is crocodile which is their four ply yarn from the needle size and the um, tension gauge that doesn't seem to, oh it's a 65% superwash 20% nylon 15% silk and you can feel the silk it does feel very very soft to the touch um, then we have Sweet Georgia Tough so Love Sock, which I showed you previously, but this is the Lupine, which is, let me just get the right one, is the blue one. It's, it's a kind of deep violet, I guess. It's purplish blue, almost. Um, the, the two speckled ones are from Oink Pigments in their... Targi Pigtail, which is a sock weight yarn, um, which is 90% superwash Targi and 10% nylon. That's their lovely um, logo and band. And the colorway on this one is Desert Dessert. And I have to say, it does remind me somewhat of pictures you see of the Californian and Arizona and desert, for example, but also it reminds me as an Englishman of um, rhubarb and custard, <laughs> that pink and that lovely corally pink and the, the bright sunshine yellow of egg yolks. And then finally, we have, sorry, they're all tied together. So yeah, it's Vegas Nights by Owl Cat Designs. No, that's the name of the, sorry, that's the name of the pattern that you can make with them. Sorry, yes, there's the band. This is Staccato Shepherd Sock. Again, it's not the easiest. That's the label, if I can show you the label. And this is 80% superwash and 20% nylon. And its colour is Argon. I don't know the significance of that. I'm being very careful with the playing card because there is actually download code there for a pattern, uh, which I haven't used yet, so I must have a look. And that's the pattern, Vegas Nights by Owlcat, Owlcat Designs. If I put my finger over it, you'll see. It's, that's the... There we are. Um, and I've not tried that one. I've not downloaded it, so I don't know what it is. These are... Five 25 gram skeins of yarn so I doubt if it's the socks it's probably for a, a shawl a five color shawl I would guess with two speckles and three solids and these are solids they're not particularly tonal um, so that and they work incredibly well together the whole collection works incredibly well together I think I just love those purples and reds mixed in there with the dark greens that's that's a lovely and and browns as well which you, brown is a color you don't often see in in yarns because it's it's what used to be known in the trade trade as a drab I mean, we call them neutrals now but they used to call them drabs and that, that it's just associated with not being particularly bright and cheerful um, so i'll pop those back in there that was the bag they came in I do like these organza bags. They, they keep the moths off things very successfully. And then the other part of that that I bought was this string quintet, marimba, compiled, composed rather by Lorna's Laces. I will just get the card out to see if there is anything. Yes, there is. So this is the shepherd sock, which is 80% superwash merino and 20% nylon so that is the card which is a lovely card and this is the quintet and that is such a lovely set of colors and again this rusty brown color makes an appearance which I really like that color I mean I wouldn't want to necessarily use it a lot but I think it really does give a nice background to allow the other colours to really shine and stand forward. Um, 
those browns don't get a lot of love, I, I, I fear, in in the designing world. But I do, you know, they are useful and they are, they they can be very pretty as well. So there we are. So that's that's my yarn acquisition. Um, I thought I'd do a little bit of shop talk now. Um, just show a few things that have been on sale and are on sale in the shop uh, by different makers. So Mike has been doing quite a bit of wood turning recently and I wish I had the item to be able to show you what he's done. Um, but there are other wood turners as well. Um, so his uncle, I commissioned his uncle and he made me let me just get rid of the dust that's in the... There we are. I'll, I'll back up the floor afterwards. Um, his uncle made me these two... Well, two bowls. The other one is slightly light, lighter than this, but these are yarn bowls, and I use these a lot. I mean, I really do. Um, the other one is here and actually has yarn in it. I was making um, Christmas trees decorations. In fact, there's one partially finished from before Christmas that I never quite finished using crocodile stitch which is a lovely pattern very simple it only takes about an hour to make one up um, so these are the two bowls side by side so his uncle made these as a commission he didn't really like doing the um, he found this rather tedious and didn't enjoy doing that so I've suggested that if he were to make other bowls like this he could just drill holes they would work just as well though once the yarn is through and you started knitting, you can't then remove remove it until the ball is finished or you finish knitting. But the, these are, I mean, they're very lovely. His, his uncle is very skilled, Turner, and, and he has other, but the reason I asked him to make these is because I saw the other bills that he has made that we now sell in the shop. And he's won several local competitions for wood turning where he lives in South Wales. Um, he's a very accomplished wood turner. Excuse me. But we have another wood turner. In fact, he's the father of one of the young people that works in the shop. Um, and he makes lit he has a full-time job, obviously, but he also makes little bits and pieces. And big bits and pieces as well, actually. He makes chopping boards and um, little tubs and also bowls. He's made resin inlaid bowls, which have been very pretty as well. And they sell quite reasonably. But I asked him to make some Christmas decorations this year. And so one of the things he made was this lovely father uh, snowman. Um, and it's, it's completely undecorated, but I don't think it loses anything for that. I put the, um, the kind of silvery yarn on as the hanger. Um, and we sold quite a few of these. And he also made some as angels as well. Um, but the other big item that he made were Christmas trees and of various types very much led but in his design by the wood that he was working on because he was just using small off cuts of wood from this and that that he'd been making so you can see there's a veritable forest of trees now these were sold as christmas decorations and as you can see you just put a piece of yarn through and and they hang from the tree but actually we continue to sell them even after christmas because people are using them as light pulls in the bathroom for example um, as something a little bit different from just a run-of-the-mill ordinary piece of plastic hanging from the ceiling. And I've actually put one in, in my bathroom as well because it's such a good idea. So we've continued to sell the trees as a tree hanger. Um, but he also makes these lovely, really lovely spinning tops. Um, and again, he's very much led in the shape by the wood itself. So they, they, they are all different, one from each other. So you could actually buy the whole set and they're all different. And they're all incredibly well balanced and they spin for ages once you actually get them going. I mean, you can't see them, but that's spinning away now. <laughs> it's not much of a demonstration when you can't see it, is it? But they are beautifully made and beautifully finished. And you can see the finish on the wood is just outstanding. So these have been quite popular, but just a few pounds. They're nice little stocking fillers, but they're also little gifts that you can buy your grandchild if you're... Abingdon is a curious town. It's in many ways a, a split identity. It's 
largely a dormitory town for Oxford. So a lot of people who work in the centre of Oxford in the big in the university and the big companies that are in Oxford tend to live because it, it's marginally cheaper, but there are more houses available, tend to live in Abingdon as, as the, the major. Abingdon to the south and Bicester to the north. But Abingdon also is a tourist town. It's the furthest navigable part of the Thames um, from London, from the sea. And it's got lots of historic buildings and there's also a marina and all kinds of things. So we, we do get a lot of river traffic, holiday makers as well. So it's quite useful to have little gifts and trinkets that people can buy for uh, grandchildren, for example, or just as a memento of the visit. And the beauty of these gifts, as I've mentioned before, is that most of them are unique to my shop. They can't be bought elsewhere. They're just not available. Um, so at Christmas, we also had a new maker who came in and she was shaking like a leaf. It was, it was, it was scary how scared she, nervous she actually was. And she um, had been recommended to come and see us because she made little beaded gifts for her co-workers. And they said they were good enough for people to buy. And she didn't have that confidence in herself. But she made these fantastic little Christmas trees. I bought this one for myself because I liked it so much. And she also made matching little rings that could be used either as napkin rings or as tea light holders. So you, you could have the sapphires on either side of the, uh, on the mantle on either side of, the Christmas tree, you could have two little tea light holders, for example. And they're just adorable Christmas trees, they really are. And she makes them in a number of different colours, and it's just beadwork. It's, it's very simple beadwork, it's not... But it's very well executed, it's, it's very nice to see. And so she was, she was very relieved, not only that I didn't laugh her out of the shop, but that we actually sold four pieces on the same day that she brought them in, so it reassured her that she was... Uh, that what she was making was, was worth selling. And we also have another lady who is a beader. Um, but she's a more um, advanced beader. And she makes, uh, amongst many other things, she made this lovely Christmas tree decoration. And what I like about this, is, uh, as well as the fact it's beautiful, and you can see that I have a sapphire, oops, I have a sapphire and diamond thing going on. Um, I've always liked sapphires and diamonds. In fact, sapphire is my birthstone. Um, even though I prefer ameth amethyst in my rings, uh, sapphire is my birthstone. Uh, amethysts and opals are my two favourite stones. But I like I like the sapphire and diamond combination. It's it's a classic combination. My mother's diamond engagement ring was a sapphire and diamond ring. Um, what I really like about this, as much as anything else, is the ball that's in the middle, which is actually the ball from a roll-on deodorant that has been removed, painted with nail varnish, and then becomes the base for this. So it's, it's actually, again, it's not sending rubbish to landfill. They're beautifully made. She's a very, she ran a workshop, actually, um, just before Christmas. People made little stars beaded stars and they they loved it as well it was a new new activity that they'd not tried before and she she was very nervous about whether she'd be able to teach people and whether she knew what she was doing and all that kind of thing but she, of course she did know what she was doing she's very capable and and I find a lot of the time it's just about giving people that initial confidence to believe in themselves that actually they are capable of the things that they can do and you know that lack of self-belief is holding a lot of people back and it's a shame because it, it's so unnecessary. It's also not true. Um, anyway, there we are. So those are all things that other people make in the shop. We've also got a new line which is kind of inspired by the um, lockdown situation that we find ourselves in. Um, and it grew out of... Uh, we, one of the things we've done in the shop is every Monday evening after, uh, after we shut the shop at five, we have a two hour, what we call a crafty coffee, where 
and it's a natter group, if you like, but it, you can bring along any craft. And that was how we met Sue, who makes these things. She came along, or comes along to the sessions. Her daughter uh, is a calligrapher, and she comes along to the sessions, and she works at the bookshop across the road from us. And her friend Haley is a social worker, but she's a cross-stitcher, and she comes along as well. Other people who... Uh, Claire, who's worked in the shop, she's a knitter and crocheter, and we have Anne, who is a, a, a knitter, and um, Julia, who's a crocheter, and Mike does some of his wire work, and I do knitting or crochet, depending what I'm working on, and there's um, Daniela is another one who comes, um, and there's a couple of other people as well. Uh, and some of them are people, What the, we, we, I certainly know that three of them are people who this is their only social engagement with other people. They see other people when they go to the shops or whatever, but they're only. This is actually the only time that they spend with other people, chatting about whatever is on their mind or whatever is on somebody else's mind. And that was one of the things I was keen to provide. You know, there's no charge to come. You don't even have to buy a drink. You can just sit and and bring your craft along and sit in the shop. I mean, everybody tends to buy a drink, and that's fine as well. But there's no obligation to do so. And it's a real community service, but obviously we've not been able to do it with the lockdown situation. So for the last three weeks now, we've moved to an online, a virtual crafty coffee. And so we all, I, we have a Facebook group, again, because everybody is known to everybody else. So, and we're all friends in real life, so we're all friends on Facebook. So it's the simplest way to get a group of a dozen people together. And we spend an hour or two just chatting about things and making things during that hour, that time. And it's all very nice. Not everybody who physically comes is able to do the online thing, but that's that's just the way it is. And something, sorry, my camera has stopped recording again, so I'm going to have to increase. That's obviously one of the things I'm going to have to do is increase the recording time on the camera, which I'll do. Now that I know that that's an issue, that's something else I need to pay attention to. Um, I mean, it's not an issue in terms of storage because it's got a 64 gigabyte SD card, so it's plenty of storage for the video. So it, that's not the issue. It's just the, the, the file size is arbitrarily limited, and I can take that limit off, I hope. Um, anyway, so we have these sessions, and most of us use a laptop or a smartphone or a tablet to take part. And those of us with laptops, of course, the camera is fixed and it's it's you don't have to worry about it slipping and sliding but one of the people who takes part Haley, her ipad kept falling over so mike has um a couple of 3d printers and we've been using the the large one to print face masks for the nhs um there's a consultant in his village who said that they're still very much in need for them so th these are the masks that you put the inserts into the middle and that's the bit that does the filtering but you need the, the, the physical mask as well to um, hold it and there are lots of patterns on online for the face mask so it's not it wasn't difficult to download one um sorry i can see the wall has slipped again um so he said he could design a, a tablet stand for Haley. And he did, and it was very good. As, as a prototype, it was very good. But then he, I said, how about putting our logo on it and that kind of thing. And so he came up with this design, and this is what we're now selling. Um, and I hope you can see, it says Willow Shake Shop, and there's, it has our Willow Tree logo. I think you can just about see it. And it's on a smooth surface. It's a ridged little layer so that you just stand the smartphone or tablet in there and it's completely hands-free at that point and it's got enough weight and enough on the felt on the bottom that it won't slip with the weight of the tablet or the smartphone on it so Haley's going to use hers tomorrow for the first time so that will be nice to see and this is a very much a, a product which is of the moment because lots of people are suddenly having to use their smartphones. I've got tripods for mine, but you know, 
and that I've also got a laptop, but not everybody has that. And you know, you're having to prop things up, and it slips, and it doesn't look professional, or you just—it's just irritating. Um, so it, it's just a, a little thing, and we'll continue to sell them afterwards because it's a, a small um, item from Willows. Um, we're, they're only—we're only charging a fiver, so it's not not going to break the bank for anybody in terms of uh, using them. Um, so I'll be promoting those on Facebook from tomorrow. Um, while I was at Unravel this year, I did buy one thing and one thing only. And that was this, which is a weaving pin. This is made from re reclaimed hardwood. It's remarkably light. It's very simple. It's just a, a, a long needle, basically, but large enough. And I've, I've put something on just to... There are two ways of using a weaving frame like this. And one is to wind the wool onto a bobbin. I mean, these are such sweet little bobbins, my sheep. And we'll be making some of those for the shop as well. Um, and then you can feed the bobbin between, but you can see it's actually quite difficult because the bobbin is wider than the, the gap, the shed, that it's got to go through. I mean, it doesn't help that it's twisted slightly, but that's okay. But even the widest part of the shed is not particularly wide. So what the... I'll do this so that you can't see my face, but you'll be able to see the needle. So what the needle does is goes into the shed quite happily. I'll pop it through, and then you'll be able to see it. I'll move it up so you can see it better. So you can see that um, perhaps, there we are, that the needle has gone straight through the shed. And of course you can then just pull it out at that point and it will because it's threaded it will then just leave that behind and you can build up uh, what I'm doing here is just a basic landscape picture as it were I mean there are lots of different weaving techniques and this I'm just using various different types of yarn this this is roving this is um, it's it's meant to be like a homespun yarn like these have got a bit tangled but I'll, I'll loosen those up um, so it's it's machine spun. It's a line brand, I think. Um, yes, it's line it's line brand home spun, and so it's spun in such a way, applied in such a way that it looks like it has been home spun. Anyone who's seen home spun yarn will see that this, this is very much how it appears once it's been plied. Um, now, I saw this, and I, I do want. I am teaching. I'm, I don't see myself as a teacher of weaving. I see myself as learning to weave. Oh, Toby has moved the camera. <laughs> you silly sausage. You turned the camera around, didn't you? There we go. Get the camera back on me. There we are. The other camera, not this camera. So the camera camera, not the phone camera. I don't know what you like, Toby. You saw this, didn't you? That's what you saw. You want this? Yes, I know. Where are you going to go and hide that, eh? You like sticks, you're a strange cat. Anyway, he is a strange cat, but he's got a strange human, haven't you, eh? So, I got this because I wanted to try it, and it does work extremely nicely. It's very nice to hold, it's very light, it's very durable. This cost 16 pounds. Now, the, the hanks of yarn I, I bought, the, um, this neon kiwi, that costs £16, and that costs £16. Now, I don't begrudge having paid the £16 at all. I'm fine that I paid the £16. But that's, that's actually an awful lot of money for something like that. And so I said to Mike, can you make something like that for me? Just to see whether it was possible. And he said, yeah, I'm sure I can work something out. And Toby's moved them. <laughs> They were right in front of me. What have you done with them, Toby? Right, found them again. <laughs> right, anyway, we found them. Toby had moved them, but I <laughs> rediscovered them. So this, this needle, £16. So Mike made me this one, which is a softwood. It's a pine, um, but it's 
equally good. It's not quite as long. It's a little bit shorter, but only marginally. And we, you know, we can make them any size we like, really. Um, so that cost him less than 30p to make. So we'll be making a few more of those for the workshop and then possibly to sell. But I also asked him if he could make me one out of wire because obviously he is Mike Baston one. Right, um, sorry, I had a bit of a hiatus there because my phone said its memory was full and it wasn't, but I've emptied the memory so it is working properly now. But I think that might be a little message to me that maybe I'm going on too long. So I will begin to wrap this up now. Um, so I've shown you quite a few bits and pieces that we've made in the shop, but I was wanting to show you the final thing. Because, as I say, Mike is known as a wire artist, um, more than a wood. And he, he's learning the wood turning, but his uncle is the wood turner. He's, he's just learning a little bit of it. Hello, Toby. Come on on here, then. There you go. Um, and so he said he could make... He, he wasn't sure that he could make something with wire, so I said, well, you know, give it a go and we'll see if it works. And he did, and he, he solved the problem by twisting, uh, I think it's two lengths, it may be three. Oh, it's actually, yes, it, it's four lengths of wire twisted together in two groups of two. That's the way to describe it. And he came up with this really rather brilliant solution. So um, it compares very favorably to the, he made it a little bit shorter, but that's again, that's not an issue. The, the length of it is, is manageable, whichever way. But he's twisted the wire together to make it quite sturdy. I mean, it will bend if you put a lot of pressure on it, but there's not, never a lot of pressure going on this. Um, and he's used this kind of trefoil ending. He's not very happy with the way he's done the trefoil, he'd work on that, but this was just the first prototype. And I'm, I think it's perfectly fine, but you know, he's a perfectionist, so it needs to be absolutely perfect for him. Um, but this rather attractive trefoil arrangement where you can simply put the yarn through this hole at the back and it will just work as a needle of an, uh, the eye of a needle. And this will has enough rigidity that it will quite happily go through those gaps in the, um, in the shed for the weaving so yeah and he lacked it so it won't discolor but this end will get a patina over time which is very nice and that's it basically so yeah I, th I thought this was a really clever and interesting and attractive solution to the issue um, so he's hoping to make more of these once things calm down in such a way that he's able to pay a bit more attention he may even be able to put a few beads on as, as kind of jewels although you don't want it to get to, pop to the point where it's going to start snagging so he he look at that carefully and maybe the maybe there is some market for putting it at this end on the on the uh point of the arrow as it were and it does have a rather nice look of a, a arrow about it it's very nicely balanced in the hand it it will uh, rest quite happily and it doesn't feel heavy. It, it, you can use it at the end, you can use it in the middle, and it, it, it all feels right. So, yeah, we'll see how that goes off. Um, I think that's probably it. I was going to talk a little bit more about the weaving, but I won't. I did find, however, another finished object that you have never seen. And this was while I, while I was still part of the crochet group we did some Bavarian crochet, which is very straightforward crochet. It's, it's more a design than it is a style of crochet. It's, it's, it's all trebles and chains. There's nothing, nothing else in it. Um, but we made these, well, we, we made little squares, but I made this rather sweet little bag, um, which is, it, again, it's my kind of rhubarb and custard. <laughs> Look, I, I just in, I just like little bags. It's not lined. It's just a little bag, and I made a, a hand a, a strap to go around just from regular crochets. What I did do, I um, did double crochets, single if you're American, across to make the strip, and then I reinforced it by then doing some along the sides, both sides, which you can see it's still got a lot of stretch in it, even though it's cotton. Um, Actually, I don't think this is. I think this is acrylic. It's got a lot of stretch. No, this is... Hang on a second. No, the uh, the strap is cotton. 
it's cotton and acrylic mix. Um, it's still got a bit of stretch in it, but not nearly as much as it would have if I hadn't put the uh, double crochets along both edges, single if you're American. Um, so there we are. So that was my final finished object. I made this about a year ago. Um, I, I know a little girl who would probably love to have that, so I must send it to her. Uh, yeah, it's, it's all the right colours for a nice little over the, over the head. Oh, sorry, oh, it's getting late. So I think that would look very nice. It's got, it's got a nice look to it. So yeah, I think she'd like that. So I'll send that off to her. Right, so I'm going to call it a day there because I think I've witted enough this week. It's been a bit disjointed and I'm sorry for that. It's, um, I, I'm also experimenting a little bit. I will be editing this this evening. Um, I don't know whether it will be up live tonight or whether it will be tomorrow. Um, it, it all depends how long the editing process takes and whether the, the uh, camera footage works at all. Um, but I guess the only thing I can say now is stay happy, stay well, stay safe and keep crafting. So bye for now. <laughs> <laughs>